I'm your host, Dr. Joe Dispenza. Let's begin. Your body is a protein producing machine. And proteins are responsible for the structure and the function of your body. And every single cell in your body, except red blood cells, makes proteins. Your immune system makes immune proteins called antibodies. Your stomach cells make stom stomach proteins called enzymes. Your skin cells make skin proteins called collagen and elastin. Your muscle cells make muscle proteins called actin and myosin. And in order for your body to make a protein, a gene has to be regulated in the cell. Are you with me? Come on, is this too much? So they used to say, you know, you're hardwired to be a certain way and you're doomed by your genes. That's a lie. We are marvels of adaptability and change. But if you're a scientist studying rats in an unchanging environment, you're not going to see many genetic changes or neurological changes. Would you agree? So then, genes are like Christmas tree lights. They're turning on and off all the time. And when they turn on, they upregulate, they make a healthy protein. And when they downregulate or turn off, they make a cheaper protein. And, you know, the central dogma in science was that genes create disease. Less than 5%, more like 1% of every person that's born with a genetic condition comes from birth. Like Tay-Sachs disease, sickle cell anemia, type 1 diabetes. The other 95 to 99% is from lifestyle and behaviors. And so... Scientists that were going to map the human genome, they said, okay, there's a hundred thousand proteins that make up the body. So there should be a hundred thousand genes. There's 40,000 regulatory proteins that help make those proteins. So that's 40,000 more genes. So a hundred thousand plus 40,000 is 140,000 genes for every protein. When they mapped the human genome, 23,688 genes. You're 300 genes away from a chimpanzee. Some more than others, but roughly that. Because in one gene, you could have over 3,000 variations on that gene. And genes don't create disease. It's the environmental signal that signals the gene to inst instruct it and select it to make new proteins. But if you're thinking the same thoughts, making the same choices, demonstrating the same behaviors, creating the same experiences to produce the same emotions, you have the same lights on and the other lights off, and you're headed for a genetic destiny. Are you with me still? Take a group of stressed out executives. You teach them how to find the present moment. You teach them how to breathe. You teach them how to make a few different choices and to do a few different things. And you teach them how to express some suppressed emotions. And at the end of eight weeks, they regulate 1,561 new genes. Over 800 genes for growth and repair. And just about 700 genes to downregulate inflammation and disease, turning on new lights, turning off old lights. And so then, we did an experiment in February of this year in our advanced workshop. I randomly selected 120 people, and I wanted to measure their cortisol levels, which is the stress hormone level. And I wanted to measure another chemical called IgA, immunoglobulin A, or salivary immunoglobulin A. The primary defense against bacteria and viruses in your body, better than any flu shot. And what happens is, is that when your stress hormones go up, your immune system goes down. Because as you begin to mobilize all this energy for some threat in your external environment, real or imagined, you rob the energy in your internal environment for growth and repair. 
So if you keep turning on the fight or flight response, you keep turning on the sympathetic nervous system, and you're mobilizing all this energy. You're drawing from this invisible field of vital energy around your body, and you're turning it into chemistry. And if you keep doing that, the field around your body shrinks. And now you are more matter and less energy, more particle and less wave. And now in your life, you are matter trying to change matter. And it's going to take time to get what you want. But as you keep diminishing your vitality, and you keep robbing from this field, the immune system begins to shut down because all the troops are fighting some war abroad and there's no homeland security and IGA levels go down. So we randomly selected 120 people and we measured their cortisol levels and we measured their IGA levels. Now when you're under stress, the emotions that you feel under stress is anger, hostility, frustration, impatience, fear, anxiety, worry, guilt, shame, envy, jealousy, competition. Those are all created by the hormones of stress. And psychology says those are normal human states of consciousness. Those are altered states of consciousness. Because living in stress is living in survival. And stress is when your brain and body are knocked out of balance. Stress is when your brain and body are knocked out of homeostasis. Are you with me? So, I reasoned, well, what if the reverse was actually true? What if people were taught how to open their heart? And when you're frustrated, when you're impatient and you're angry, your heart beats out of rhythm. And we've measured that over and over again. The heart gets highly incoherent, and the heart has its own little brain. But when you feel gratitude and thankfulness and care and inspiration, all of a sudden, if you do it properly, your heart will start to get very orderly, very coherent, very synchronized. And so I wanted our students to sustain an elevated emotion for at least 10 minutes, two to three times a day. That's it. But what happens when you experience an elevated emotion, and we know this because we've measured it also, if you can begin to sustain an elevated emotion, this is the creative center right here. It's like dropping a pebble in water. And if you are able to sustain that emotional state, you are dropping pebble after pebble after pebble in a perfect rhythm. And what happens is the field around the body tends to grow. Now you are more energy and less matter, more wave and less particle. And now you begin to feel connected to something greater. And if you can feel more deeply, more richly and more completely, you're dropping a big stone and it's creating a bigger wave. And that energy is a frequency. And all frequency carries information, just like a radio wave. And your thought is the intention on that wave. And so, I had them sustain these elevated states for 10 minutes a day, twice a day or three times a day for four days. At the end of four days, their cortisol levels dropped three standard deviations, clinically significant. But their IgA levels went from about 53 and a half to 87. That is scientific history right there. They epigenetically signaled new genes in new ways, and their immune system got much, much stronger. And there were a few people whose values were over 100. 10 minutes of gratitude a day could heal you. It's better than any flu shot. So then, living in stress is living in survival. And all organisms in nature can tolerate short-term stress. 
But human beings, we become addicted to very chemicals of stress, very hormones of stress, and we use the people and conditions and the problems in our life to reaffirm that addiction to the emotion. According to Dr. Joe Dispenza, people don't have to follow a genetic destiny. He has stated that most people that have a medical condition which leads to further ailment is not because of genetics, but rather their lifestyle, environment, and thought. After long research, Dr. Joe Dispenza has deduced that when people keep thinking the same thoughts which cause anxiety or depression, they lead to specific kind of environment which then leads to a certain lifestyle, which then downregulates genes to create cheap proteins which then leads to disease and ailment. Hence, if a person can change their train of thought and start living to a better lifestyle, they will upregulate good proteins which give control to a person to lead their own genetic destiny. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and do make sure to share your thoughts with us in the comment section.